Alrighty, hi, my name is Josh and I'm here to talk to you about TSP investment options, uh, as well as covering the difference between traditional versus Roth vehicles, and uh, I'll go into a little bit of the TSP fund options. Now this is primarily focused towards military members who are following my series, hopefully that's you, that, that is you guys. Um, and this whole thing is kind of like, you know, little baby stepping stones to get you to think about retirement and saving. So, first up, you've probably, you've probably heard of these two options, traditional and Roth. Um, but the, uh, I guess the, the logical progression here is, okay, we've talked about the blended retirement system. You saw how much money you can make or you, you, you want to start contributing to your TSP. Uh, because you have decided to opt in. We've made a budget so we can figure out how much you can contribute. Um, but then when you get to my pay or whatever, how, however you will uh, alter your contributions to TSP, uh, you're, you're given this, the, this option when you decide um, how you want to allocate your, your contributions. There's um, traditional and Roth. Well, what are they? Uh, the older option, traditional, um, is money that you contribute before taxes. So you're effectively, as far as the IRS is concerned, lowering your taxable income. So when you do file taxes, you um, the, the system says, oh, we took way too much from you, have some more back. Uh, there, the uh, that's one of the advantages. Um, that's the, I would say the first advantage of traditional, and uh, a kind of uh, benefit one A is you can take that money that you get back that most of us know as you know filing taxes in probably April or sooner, uh, and that 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 big chunk of money and you go buy something, or you can invest it and have tons of money when you're old, tons of money. Uh, that's that that I would say is the first option. The the other benefit is these uh, this this collection of money uh, that you put into traditional. The growth that you get on it is not taxed uh, until you withdraw it at the age of retirement. So um, there are certain rules that say, hey, you have to withdraw. They're they're called RMDs, required minimum distributions. And the general rule is when you hit seventy you should start withdrawing 4%. Just remember that, 4% when you're 70. That's like the, the, the simple, simple version. Um, but when you withdraw from traditional, you will pay taxes on it because you didn't pay when you first got the money. Um, and that's totally fine. I mean, the government has the other money eventually, right? Right. Um, And yeah, so that covers all of those points here. A newer vehicle is Roth. Now what Roth does is you get taxed on the money in the current year, uh, but then you put it into this vehicle and you invest it however you want. And those, um, the, the growth and all that stuff isn't taxed on ever. Ever, 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 ever. Um, yeah. So, you know, when it says it's taxed on, it, it, it's saying that you have already paid taxes on the dollar for each dollar, right? So you don't have to pay it again later. Traditionally, you did. Um, so people like Roth because you pay it up front now, and then you, you know, it grows and grows and grows, and you can withdraw it with no taxes whatsoever. Now there are benefits uh, to each. Um, it's actually quite difficult to say which one is better for you. Uh, certain financial, and to this day, it's, I mean, it's gonna be argued. Um, I would say, generally speaking, if uh, for a not so serious investor, not to like besmirch anyone, um, I would say Roth is better, but if you were going for like strict value gains, 
traditional ends up being better, and here's why. So in uh, for the TSP, maximum maximum annual contribution is eighteen thousand, right? So say you contribute eighteen thousand. Now you can do eighteen thousand into both, but if you contribute eighteen thousand into traditional, you don't get taxed on that, right? And that grows to a certain amount. The argument against Roth is you aren't kind of able to contribute 18,000 because you do get taxed. So it's effectively contributing 13,500. And I'm sorry, this is getting into big numbers, um, but someone did the math and says that on, with this style of logic, uh, the traditional system is much better uh, by a great magnitude. But like, if, if you're doing a thousand here and a thousand there, Roth is probably the way to go because you're already taxed on it, right? So you're not kind of dealing with the, the missing money that you get by being taxed on it if you were to go with much higher numbers. So that's where it, it kind of gets shaky. Um, you could just do both or play with your tax brackets. Like traditional is a traditional is a great way to get under the tax bracket if you're about to cross over into it. Um, which actually reminds me a very very important uh, aspect of tax brackets that isn't often understood is it's uh, tax brackets are progressive, which means. Um, so most people, the, the way I thought about taxes one year ago was, okay, I make, let's say that, I don't know, $50,000 is the like cutoff point, right? So $50,000, I am taxed at 15%. $50,000, $50,001, $50,002, $50,003, $50,004, I'm taxed at 25%. Now, because I gained that $1, I used to think that the entire amount went down 25% instead of 15. That's not how it actually works. Um, essentially, that $1 that is into that next bracket is taxed on 25%, but the 50,000 that came before it is on the 15%. Another way of thinking about it is imagine a row of buckets, just one after another, and it goes 10, 15, 25, and so on. You take your big pie, pail of money and you pour it, well, water money, right? You pour it into these buckets as you progress, but you only go as it fills up. So then you go back to the first bucket and you say, okay, 10% from this bucket is taxed. Whoosh. You, have, you now have 90% of your money in that bucket there. Um, and then this bucket here, 15%. 15% is gone, 85% there, 25%, 75%. You get the idea. So that's how tax brackets work and how you can kind of take advantage of them um, if you desire. Uh, that's pretty much that option right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow, three hours of talking. <laughs> there were a lot of cuts in that blended retirement system video, I, I, I tell you. Anyway, so the TSP options. Let's say you figured out, okay, I want to do traditional because tax brackets are awesome and you can then sign a W-4 to claim an exemption to contribute even more. There's, there's a whole mess of stuff you can do. Um, you are like, okay, what do I do then? Well, here you actually have to go to the TSP website. You can't do this from MyPay. And uh, there are, so by default, a lot of people are in the, the life cycle funds right down here, um, which is a mix of all the funds above that you see there. Um, but if you want to be a little creative or whatever, or just, just to know, what are these funds that you're being invested in? Um, so the way life cycle funds work, I guess, before I continue with this, is 
while you're younger, it'll be in more aggressive stocks, which are like these, let's say these bottom three here, the I, S, and C fund. And when you're older, they go more into the F and the G fund. So over time, it'll periodically change the percentage from aggressive to conservative. Totally fine. Uh, I mean, really, it's whatever you want to do. I'm personally, you don't have to follow this advice. Remember, I'm not a professional from my first video. Uh, not a professional. Um, I'm personally doing the C fund and sticking with it the whole time because it's American economy, and if that goes under, you're probably not going to care about how much money you have because everything's like anarchy. Anyway, um, so the G fund. The G Fund is your government securities, it's very, very, very safe, and there's a low uh, increase, like we'll say like uh, somewhere between a tenth and a third of a percent. Not fighting inflation, mind you, so you're technically losing money by investing into it. You're just putting it into a bank and hoping it is kind of worth something that it was when you put it in there. The F fund are your bonds. They're a little bit less safe, which I, I, I hate using this word because most people like to be safe, right? It's, it's just saying that there is slightly more risk involved in investing, but it's not a terrible risk. Um, but with the risk, you know, you have more poten uh, potential for gains. The C fund, which is my favorite, um, matches the S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies of America that's large to medium companies, and uh, uh, that's like 80% of the American economy. Um, the S fund, the, the Dow Jones, is the small to medium companies, which uh, are not in the C fund. A, uh, this would be more like a, a, a total market index. Um, and the I fund is your international stocks of 20 countries. That is very volatile. Um, my little personal cheat sheet to this, which I don't have in the slide, unfortunately, is if you go to the TSP website, um, where you have to make these changes anyway, um, you can look up these funds and look at their historical rates of return, and it'll say, okay, $100 then has grown in this, or would have grown in this fund, uh, or since inception, right? Since the inception of all these funds, $100 would have grown to be this big right and based on the evidence that the TSP website themselves offer to us the public the C fund has the greatest gains by like it's it's a not by but uh, it has up to fourteen hundred dollars fourteen hundred dollars from a hundred whereas some of these other things is like uh, it's like 144 or like 500 it's not as much um, but again, that is your choice in how you decide you want to invest. By no means will I tell you what to do. And pretty much that's where we're at. We started with the blended retirement system. We came where we, we went through the budget and now we're here talking about investments. And really that's, that's what this video, video series has been. Uh, been intended to do is to get you thinking about money, how to invest, and become perhaps even savvier. Uh, there are some general investment uh, uh, um, tips or advice that I've received that uh, pretty much say the best thing you can do when investing is not pay attention. Which sounds weird, right? But emotion rarely leads you to a logical thought, right? Um, to put it in perspective, in 2008, we saw, well, 2009, 2008, 2009, we saw one of the greatest recessions you know, our country has ever experienced in a very long time. A lot of people bailed on their investments. They salvaged what they could and what ended up happening was the economy bounced back and they were worse off than 
almost when they started. It was some people had to like they they lost like forty years worth of work. It was impressive. Like they they had to work more because they tried to salvage what they could. Um, and this, while in a more extreme case, uh, it does prove a point. It, it, says, it sets an example saying the economy will bounce back. And in fact, for this situation, it did. I, I think it only took around 18 months, a, like less than two years, for the economy to go back to where it was before the, 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 the recession and actually be higher. So really, and this sounds odd when I say it, the best thing you can do is throw your money into the TSP and not look at it at all. Um, or at least don't pay attention to like, oh no, the economy's doing bad and stuff. I mean, currently you, you want the economy to do bad because your money is able to buy more shares. When you're older, that's when you don't want the economy to do bad. But even then, just wait it out. Uh, that's one of the most significant lessons that I feel like I've learned over, over time. Um, uh, another one is uh, all my friends say don't do day trading because that's the best way to lose money. Um, you, there are some very, very serious people who do day trading. They, you know, have their stocks on their phones and they're doing like hundreds of dollars of trades every minute or so. Just play the passive game. It's easy. It's going to get you to your goal. And I mean, if you want to talk about risk, that's risk. The, the, the C fund, phew, that's safe. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the series. Uh, if you have any questions or ideas about a future one, by all means, comment below. I am more than willing to stand in front of a camera and do a million takes uh, or so um, just to try and help you guys out. So until next time, have a good day.